Welcome back, Focus Fanatics. In this video, I will show you how to add an employee, and then I'll go over all the fields in the employee setup. So let's just dive right in and show you how to add an employee. There are two ways you can access the employee screen. Once you are logged into Focus Setup, you can either go to the employee menu and select employees, or you just simply click the employees icon right here. Now from this point, you want to add a new employee, so all you have to do is click the Add button. And there are a few required fields that we absolutely have to have while we're adding a new employee. And that would be a first name, a last name, nickname, an access code, and a job. So let's go ahead and we'll type our first name in, Matt, last name Kovo, and if we tab over it will automatically Put a nickname in for us and of course we can change it if we want. Now there's a couple different ways we can assign an access code. We can click on the access code label and it will assign a one of the first available numbers for us to use or we can just put in up to a four digit number. All right, the last thing that is required is going to be a job. So we'll say our job is bartender, and let's go ahead and say our pay rate is $7.25 an hour. So once you hit save, you can it saves all the information. Now we have a bunch of other fields we can go in there and populate if we would like. Um, first thing we can do is we can associate a picture with the employee, so when they log in, you can see what they look like. Uh, see what they look like. Uh, simply just click the blank area in the picture and you can find a picture. So now we have a picture of our employee here. The ID 1 and ID 2 um, are up to a 20 alphanumeric character employee identifier. The ID 1 is usually used for a social security number if you if if you want. So you can see it, it takes shape of a number. In ID2 is we have a mask associated with it. Now both ID1 and ID2 they can be changed, the mask can be specified in the timekeeping setup and it restricts the input that may be entered into this field. Alright, so we have our next field, you know, 123 Main Street. Of course, we have our city and state. We can put it there. And we can say our emergency contact here. We'll say call Mike Kovo. Emergency phone number. We could say 512 555-1212. And our phone number would be uh, the phone number of the employee. So we can say 713-555-2323. And if we have a home phone number or a cell phone number, of course, we can put that information in there as well. Language. You can specify English or Spanish. It defaults to English if you leave it at none. And if you have it at Spanish, that means every time the employee clocks in or out, it's going to prompt them to clock out in Spanish instead of English. An example of that, instead of saying, are you sure you want to clock in and play in English, it's going to uh, display it in Spanish so the Spanish-speaking employees will be able, to, be able to understand it a little bit better. So birthday, uh, you can enter your birthday in there. Hire date, you know, if it's today, you can click on little calendar. Last raise, we haven't had to raise as a new employee, so we can leave it blank. If you want to go back, when they get terminated, you can put the termination date and a list of termination reasons here. And the little keyboard you see right here, if you're in the front of the house and don't have access to a keyboard like you would in the back office, you can simply just put the... Uh, pop up the keyboard and you can see what what field you're uh, going to be modifying. This one's going to be modifying the first name. So if we want to enter a different first name, we can just type it in and hit enter. 
Now our W-4 information, you know, for your payroll reports and stuff. Uh, you can put all your information, whatever kind of uh, allowances and your amount in there. Uh, you know, the amount is any additional withholding. Employment status for new employees will be active. You can see you can also mark them as inactive or terminated. And if it's a manager, you can uh, put their salary per day in there. That way you can just get rid of your normal pay rate. And you'll see we have a few options here. The required card option means that employee must use a magnetic card, a keyboard, scanner, uh, or a scanner to enter an access code to gain access to the system. The enforced scheduling option, uh, you'll want to select this if the employee is only allowed to clock in or out if they have a valid scheduled time, otherwise they will need manager approval to clock in or clock out. Extend rights. Now this option means the employee will have a superset of job rights if they have multiple jobs. So in other words, all the job rights that are turned on for bartender and manager will be available if you select the extend rights option. The clock in, clock out, just what it sounds. If you have any back of house employees, you know, cooks, dishwashers, uh, that they, that do not need access to the front of the house. All you have to do is select on clock in and out and only uh, clock in and out only, and that's the only thing they can do. Now, fingerprint at clock in. This requires that an employee use their fingerprint to clock in or clock out. And the fingerprint required option is you'll want to select this option if the employee is required to use their fingerprint. To log in at all times. And lastly, uh, the skills over here is just the skill level of the employee for each listed skill. And that wraps it up for adding new employees here. Thanks for tuning in, Focus Fanatics. Until next time, stay focused.